Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 8, hash maps, coming from the previous episode where we talked about structs. So hash maps, also known as hash tables, or in Python they are called dictionaries, are a key value store. And in Rust, anything can be a key that implements the EQ and the hash trait. So once you have that set, you can use it as a key. If you want to write um, hash map literals, so the way you would uh, nicely be able to do it in Python using the curly brace and then your uh, key column value notation, you would have to use an external crate. This has not yet been standardized because there's lots of uh, stuff needed extra in the compiler to make this work for any case. I will show you an example in the code. Speaking of which, let's jump into the code. So here we go. On the left, again, we have our Python code. On the right, the Rust equivalent, more or less. So the first line is just to visualize for Python programmers what is happening on the right. Since we do not have this nice notation that we see here on the bottom. So the nice notation we can see here on the, those lines cannot be uh, done with Rust. So this is why I stuck with this first line to give you an idea of what is happening on the right. So you can actually initialize a dict using an iterable, like a list, for example, using tuples, where you would have your key and value, key and value, coming out of the iterator. And this will then be constructed into your dictionary. However, the most often used, especially if you want to use a, a literal definition only in your code, would be using the curly braces and uh, setting it up this way. On the, the right, we do not have this notation, so we have to do it this way. So we, with let, we set up our variable literal, literal with the hash map that I imported from the standard collections. And... Uh, we let the compiler infer the type. Then for an easy notation, I chose to use a vector that has tuples with the key values inside, which is the equivalent what we have here on the first line. And then we use the into iterator and collect to collect this into a hash map. And then from there on out, we can actually print line with the debug formatter, um, the literal. And uh, yeah, so in order to have this, I uh, prepared code for you to look at how um, it is possible right now in Rust to do this. You will have to use the maplet crate, and then you get to use uh, the hash map macro. You can see here with the bang that this is a macro. And from there on out, you can use the curly braces like you do in uh, Python. However, you cannot use uh, the colon to separate the key from the value because the colon, as you know from uh, the other code in Rust, is already used to give a type declaration to a variable. So they chose to use this forward error to not uh, be uh, creating ambigu ambiguity for the compiler. And uh, this way you can uh, fairly, e okayishly write your static or literal uh, maps in your Rust code. However, this is using an external crate and uh, not something that is in the standard. Let's hop back. Good, continuing on uh, the code on the left, I create yet another dict. Then I use the angular brackets and the keys to set uh, values, then I do it for another key value, and then I remove the key called one from the dict. Then I use the get method to see if I still have that key or not, and uh, the other one as well in the print. On the right you can see the same. So basically you actually don't really have to use any type declarations if you are just doing simple stuff, because the compiler can infer that your keys are static 
strings and you're using integers for your values. So you get away with just using let the mutable because we will mutate this um, hash map and uh, we create a new hash map and then we use the insert method to get our values inside. To remove something we use the remove method and then uh, this is very same code actually. We use the get to see if we have values in there or not. And then uh, at the very end, a uh, classic loop to loop over the whole dictionary or in Rust, then the whole hash map. We would add uh, yet another key to actually have uh, now two again inside. Then we use the items iterator to get the key value coming in the loop and then we print key and value. Same is working in uh, Rust. The only difference is in order to get a reference iterator, we use the ampersand here. And for the tuple, we have to use the parentheses to denote it's a tuple. But otherwise the source code looks very much the same. And you end up with your key values in the print statement. Now let's run the code. Running the Python code first. Hopefully this uh, works. So Python dicts pi. And we can see that we get our output of our initialized um, dict up here in uh, one line. Then uh, we have our try to get one and the two. However, we remove one here. So we get a none, and then it gives us the info. The value is uh, two. The value is two of the key called two. Below, we then have our loop, which would go over all the keys. So two written and the two the number, and three written, three the number. Code works fine. We have this uh, right here. Jumping over to Rust. We run the code and we get a similar output. The only big difference that you will notice is that we get uh, none. It's actually the same as in Python when we try to access something that does not exist in HashMap. So one was deleted here, therefore the return of the getter is none. But this is now the option type. And if there is a value inside, it gives you the sum uh, value back which holds the two inside. And below we have the loop and this gives us also the nice output of our keys and values. So that is equivalent and very nicely working. Now let's get into some uh, more fancy usage of dicts and hash maps. For this we jump back into the code. I open the default dict for Python and the ex same expression in Rust. Now in Python you would use uh, the collections module and get yourself uh, the default dict. This will then allow you to define like here a default dictionary that will set up a list for you for every key that has not yet been set. So this code here actually works. You do not yet have anything in here because this is uh, completely fresh, right? But you want to have banana to be a list. So you can now with the default dict right away go and append to the list a value. And the same is done without any special collections tricks in Rust by trying to get an entry of your dict using the entry method. Then uh, in this case we have to use it as a string because we defined our hash maps using string and vectors of i32. Once we have the entry we can then use the or insert or in this case I'm using or insert with because I'm calling a method to instantiate a vector. So it will either return the entry if there is one. If there is none it will use an insert with the key banana that now has a new vector. 
So I can also directly use the vector method push to give me, uh, to add me a value zero in this case. And uh, this you can use in uh, loops and uh, other stuff, of course. And uh, this also makes default tick very practical in Python. And then to only loop over uh, discrete uh, things, so either the keys or the values, this can be done, of course, in both languages, and it works the very same way. So you use the keys, keys iterator in both cases, or the values iterator to only loop over the respective keys or values. And both languages allow you to also use complicated stuff. <clears throat> like I said before, if you implement the equality uh, trait and the hash trait, you can use it as a key. This is true in Python for tuples, so you can use a tuple as a key. And this is also true for Rust. Here, of course, you have to do the type definition, so you want to have tuple of two i32s in this case that have a value of a vector. And then you can actually insert this, and this will work fine. Hash maps, well, very powerful and very similar to what you can do in Python. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series are iterators.